portion of uh, my life has been rather erratic. And when I look, when I look back over the turns I made and the uncertainties that I experienced, it never uh, looks to me like I really knew what I was up to, but God did. <laughs> and I see now how he put together some very diverse things that would not, uh, to me, have made much sense. Um, so that I could teach here. I won't go into all the details of that, but I felt I could teach here, and I could not teach in most other places, including most other seminaries. But uh, my diverse experience, missionary, pastor, all kinds of things. And then finally, church history coming in kind of late. It was not anything I thought I was going to do. In fact, when Dr. Rayburn said, you need to come back to Covenant, I came out here and said, what should I study? I did not have a PhD yet. So the plan was for me to come to Covenant, but go get a PhD and come back and teach. I had a THM in Old Testament. I had a THM from Princeton in New Testament. Studied with Bruce Metzger then. And when I came out here, they said, you need to teach church history. Well, I was kind of stunned because I didn't think I knew anything about church history. I loved it and liked reading history, but that was the plan. So I went to Princeton, got a doctorate in church history and been teaching church history ever since. But uh, something my wife said to me on the plane yesterday, coming back from Columbia, she said, you know, there is something pretty amazing about your preaching now, and that is how you can put the Bible and church history together. And I did do that quite a bit in my sermon on Tuesday, and I do that always. I've kind of learned to do that. It's not something you want to... You've got to use anything like church history uh, gently and wisely. Uh, sometimes people tell long involved stories and then they lose the point of the text that they're dealing with. But there, there are wonderful uh, things in church history as in literature that can shine light on the text but not overcome it, not overpower it. So I tell students, if you're going to use uh, illustration of church history, get in quickly, get out quickly. Don't spend too much time in there. But, you know, I can see how studying church history, being a preacher, being a missionary, working in an evangelistic organization, Ministries in Action, a church planning organization, and all these diverse things seem to have come to some kind of um, point of union somewhere in my life. So I would say to students, come here, study, learn a lot, don't worry too much about whether you're going to be a church planner or a missionary or exactly what. And test these things and get some sense of direction as to where God is calling you. But uh, take it day by day and year by year and relax and have a lot of fun. Seminary students can sometimes, maybe not now, they used to be pretty serious a lot. And there's something good about being serious, but... You can be too serious, <laughs> and I think it's important for seminary students particularly to not be too uptight about things, but just be happy, be willing to be taught, get to know each other, love each other, enjoy what's going on. Now, I know there are problems, tensions, troubles, and marriages, uh, temptations of serious kinds, financial problems, all that. So I'm not, I'm not saying just ignore all that. You have to deal with these things. But at the same time, I think it was Dr. Machen who said the, to the students at, at Princeton, uh, you, you men are, are good students, but you're not having enough fun. <laughs> So he would send them out to play tennis or something. He loved to play tennis himself and, or have a, a 
kind of an evening uh, party where they would sit around and talk about things. So what does that all add up to? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> but study, trust God, enjoy yourself, enjoy the world God has made, enjoy people around you, and know that God is in control.